Can you use the cheapest version of the brand new M2 MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. Okay, we are fully good to go. One quick note I wanna mention about, you might notice that the screen itself is a little jaggedy. That's not the M2. That's my recorder that I'm using to make sure that I can capture the screen on here. For some reason, it will only work for my external screen when I have it set to 30 hertz. So that's where the little bit of jankiness you'll see come in. So let's get right to it. Now I consider video editing to be in three parts. There's the processing, the actual cutting and editing, and then the rendering. So when it comes to the processing, the M2 MacBook Pro 13 would not work for me as in my only video editing machine. But the thing is, none of the MacBooks can because I have a 10 gigabit ethernet setup for all of my files that I keep in my server back behind that door right there. And you can get that on the MacBooks, but you need a very expensive dongle for it. The Mac Studio and the Mac Mini come with that just out of the box. So I would say if you need the only video editing computer, it would be those two. But let's see how the M2 works when you've got your files residing right on the computer itself. So what we've got here, can't make any videos without some media. Now I will be using DaVinci Resolve today. That is my editor of choice. I would imagine if you are using Final Cut Pro, you'll probably get very similar stuff because the encoder is built into the processor itself. So it's good stuff. I really like Resolve. I've recently switched over to it because it's just a, a better file system for how I like it. I like being able to organize all this stuff. So for processing, as you can see, this is just the video. This is the unboxing video. Let's lay everything out. It's working. It's working pretty darn smoothly. I am happy thus far. We are going to be using very tough video files today. We'll be using what's called HEVC or high efficiency files. Uh, you can see here, inspector, file, H.265 is the codec we're using for this. This is from the Lumix GH6, which is recording us back over here. This overhead file is an H.264. It's from the S5, which is here. If you put it in anything that's 10 bit, you get a record limit on here. So I always have this set to H.264. And then the main shot is H.264 from the GH5. So we do have 10 bit files across the board. And then this one is HEVC. Now the crazy thing about HEVC is even today, this is my custom built PC that is much more expensive than this M2 Mac by like three to four times as much. And even it will struggle with HEVC. So let's see, will this Mac struggle with HEVC? And I love these parts of the video because everybody will yell at me in the comments about how I do my multicam stuff. Just let me be, this is how I do it. Okay, one of the things I do like about DaVinci Resolve was how easy it was to do the keyboard customization. Okay, let's unlink that, unlink that. Something we do need to worry about with all the GH6 footages. For some reason, the GH6 loves recording so much audio. Okay, so we've got all that set up. Let's go down here. Now we've got our three layers. So we'll close that, close that. What I really want you to pay attention to as we're doing this edit is, how is this file going? So these are the two preview panes. Uh, you will see slowdowns and stutters if we're having problems with files um, over here. So just make sure you pay attention to that. Let's do a little bit of audio processing. Audio processing is the main reason to use DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve has the best, absolute best audio tools in the game. Let's normalize it, bring it back up a little bit. We don't wanna, we don't wanna peak too much, but we, we gotta make sure the audio sounds good. Looks pretty good. And then pay attention right here. This is how fast the playback of the clip is going. We shot this in 2997 frame rate. So you should see that if you see that below it, we're having problems. Let's see here. 2997, that's not the HEVC. This is the HEVC. 2997. 2997. 2997, everything's looking really good, really smooth so far. So let's go ahead. We don't need to do any color correction. I have not been using log for my videos for a while, but I think it does look pretty good going out to the external display. One of the problems with the M2, much like the M1 standard, is you only get one 6K display out. That sucks. So let's go ahead and edit the first minute of the unboxing video and kind of see how everything's playing out. Okay, now we want to move over from this. Let's do it top down. Oh, we got to change the rotation angle. It has changed but I want to talk to you again. What does come in the box, Gary? Okay, let's do this. 
tap on it, look back at the audience, and then we need to zoom in right here. Okay, so like right here, we want to zoom in a little bit, pop it and make it a little more interesting. When I'm talking to you, we want to zoom in just a little bit. So how is it playing back? And you notice like right up here, there's been not a single slowdown. I have not seen any slowdowns um, so far. Let's actually, you know what? Let's make this a little harder. Let's make this a little bit harder. So let's go to project settings and we'll do this instead of, the, so currently the timeline resolution is 1080p. That's what I'm seeing right here, but this is shot in 4K. So let's put it into 4K. Ultra HD, save. So now we're showing actual 4K in here. Now let's see if it's gonna slow down a little bit. It took a little bit longer to speed up on that one. Let's go. Looks pretty good so far. Now I would never edit with the timeline in 4K. I would always keep it in 1080p just cause I don't need to do the work in 4K, but let's stress it out as much as we can and see if we can find a fault in the M2. I did like how it spun around when we did that though. Okay, bring it down here. It is much more satisfying, Apple. Okay, we'll just cut this out a little bit, make it a little quicker. You wanna be making YouTube videos, you gotta make it snap and pop, tell the story quickly. Some folks are, I don't understand why you're all so mad about it. Okay, we'll come down here. It's still, I mean, the timeline is 4K. I have not yet seen any kind of a slowdown. We saw that the M1 MacBook Air is a perfectly fine video editing tool, so the M2 MacBook Pro 13 should be more than enough, but I'm really impressed so far that having the 4K timeline is not having an issue. When I try doing 4K timelines on my MacBook Air, it will take some time to get up to speed. This isn't having any bit of a problem. The M2 does have a the media encoder from the M1 Pro and above, so this should be a far better video editing tool than the M1 MacBook Air, M1 Mac Mini, M1 MacBook Pro 13, but those were all really good by themselves. Okay, now let's, we saw this, so let's zoom in a little bit, give it another little bit of a pop. Zoom in. It does, it does look exactly like all the other MacBook Pro 13s. So we cut to another angle. USB-C cable. All right, we are at about a minute of video editing thus far. And again, I'm not gonna make you sit through the entire thing. So far for the cutting part of video editing, I see no issues. DaVinci Resolve has been optimized around Apple Silicon. This has just been working great. Like I have no issues with the three layers of 4K 10-bit, it just works. That's all you can hope for in that it just works. Even with the resolution of the timeline set to 4K, no issues. Let's back up here and let's get a five minute chunk of this. So five minutes, here we go. We'll cut this out and then we'll just do like some random cuts inside of here and we're gonna do a bunch of, we're just gonna change up a bunch of stuff in here. We're gonna show things. We wanna make it so that it's hard, as hard on the computer as possible when it's editing. Because if you just set it like, you set the three layers of 4K and then you just have it render one layer 4K, it's just gonna do that one thing no matter what's on here with it. So let's change some stuff up as much as we can to make it a little more tough on the computer. Okay, change it up, change it up, change it up. We'll do that, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And then we'll do this. Okay, so we got a lot of 4K. We got a lot of, we got some audio processing. We got some editing done. There's a lot of cuts back and forth. Let's render this out and see how long it takes to render the project. Cause that's gonna be another big important part to see how well this would work as your only video editing tool. So let's test. We will do it in 4K. We'll do all the other stuff. Let's set it to the desktops. So we're using the internal capacity of the MacBook. Let's go to desktop, save, check, check, check. We'll add it to the render queue. And let's see what we get. So we also wanna check and see how fast it's rendering out right here. So real time would be if this was rendering at 30 frames per second. We can see here it's rendering at, at about 46 frames per second, 47 frames per second. So it is going pretty well. It's not going 
mind-bogglingly like twice real time, but it's doing fairly well. It says this five minute clip will take us about two minutes and 46 seconds. While this is rendering out, let's actually check out the activity monitor to see how the processor is doing. And you can see here, we're not using much of the CPU at all. What about the GPU? We're not really maxing out the CPU. The memory, how's the memory doing? We are using an awful lot of memory. Again, this is the cheapest version. We are using about 2.5 gigabytes of swap memory. CPU, not, we're barely touching the CPU at all. We're using 40% of the GPU. That's not terrible. When you can see the CPU load though, we're not using very much at all. We're using about nine, 10% of the CPU down here. So it's doing pretty well. We're almost done. Something else I haven't noticed is I haven't heard the fans turn on. This thing isn't even warm. Like it's not, the the MacBook Air, when you do video editing on it, it will get warm. This isn't, like it. you can't even tell anything's done. I can't hear the fans turned on. I can hear the fan from my recorder, but I can't hear the fan from the MacBook. And it completed that task in three minutes and 12 seconds. So that's respectable. It's not as mind blowing as I remember from the M1 processor, but it's pretty darn good. So could you use the cheapest version of the M2 MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer? Yes, absolutely. With the caveat that you do everything on the internal files, or if you already have a desk setup or a home server setup that has like 10 gigabit ethernet stuff set up like I do. Yeah. If you can get a 10 gigabit adapter, they do exist. They're just fairly expensive. Yes, you could use the M2 MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer. This computer, plenty powerful, very versatile. I think it's going to be a really safe, good choice for a lot of people, even though the internet seems to really hate this computer. I don't hate it. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. And if you like this video, click here to see the unboxing and initial impressions I have for the M2 MacBook Pro 13. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.